Maybe I'm crazy, but I'm Jake Shovelsworth from He Got Game. And that's my ankle monitor right there. It's really just a bunch of gauze, but you know, it serves the purpose. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm not. Welcome to Maybe I'm Crazy Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Happy Halloween. I'm gonna sound a little uh, more annoying than usual because I have this device on my face that makes it very difficult to talk. I don't understand how men go through lives with facial hair. I imagine it's less heavy and sticky. Right, guys, in the room? It's not as, you know, it sucks too. Well, okay. Uh, Kudos to you guys, this is not cool. Like basically how women feel wearing makeup every day is like how you guys feel wearing beard. Except for we can take our makeup off and you have to live with your beard 24 seven, so. Um, good job out of you. We'll have LeVar Arrington on the show today. Very excited to talk to him. He is from Pittsburgh. I am from Pittsburgh. Um, so we're already better than the rest of you guys. I'm sorry. Um, 412 for life. Actually, he might be 724. I don't know. I have to ask him. Anyway, the point is, um, he thinks that his high school is better than my high school. He's wrong on that, but we're going to talk about that. Uh, it will be interesting. I promise, even if you're not from Pittsburgh and obviously we'll cover a bunch of NFL stuff with him and there is a lot going on around the NFL. Uh, we'll talk about the Browns and Baker, of course, because what would a show be without the Cleveland Browns? Um, there's some trades that have been made around the league. I am going to remind you of who the best team in the league is still, um, sorry to all the Warriors fans out there. It's real life for y'all now. Um, all those days in the Hamptons are over and you're, you've joined the rest of the league. And I, I have a tip for you because I've been through this. I've lived through it. I've survived um, and come out the other end stronger, you know, thriving, not surviving anymore when it comes to being a fan. And I'll explain that to you guys later. Um, I have major props um, for the president of the United States. Wait, I haven't flipped, um, but I do have I do have some thoughts about what happened at the Nationals game, and um, yeah, we got a lot lots of other stuff going on as well. Culture report with T, of course, and uh, it's Halloween, so we're going to talk about our top Halloween movies. My list is the best, of course, but um, I'm open to some other suggestions. Uh, I'm all ears, but let's get started with Lavar Arrington. All right, Lavar Arrington, thank you so much for joining us on the sure. Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. Um, you were a little confused. When you came in. Well, I knew the name of the podcast, so I, I just figured anything to be expected as soon as I walked into the studio. Yeah, sure. That's that's a good attitude. You did not disappoint. Thank you. Yes. Thank ma'am. you. No, um, no problem. So you have been, since you came in here, <laughs> you've been dropping some things on us, so I want to review them. First okay. of all, you just mentioned that you are a Star Trek nerd. He's just going, put me out there. Yes. Yes. Well, because you're, you, you're named after LeVar Burton. That's correct. Uh, which is a great honor. Yes. To be named after LeVar Burton, who is in the Brilliant new Star man. Wars. Yes. He is a big part of probably everyone in this room's childhood mm-hmm. and reading rainbow yes butterflies in the sky Night. i can fly twice as, as high. high just take a look it's, it's in, in a book, book. it's reading, reading rainbow. rainbow yeah there you go okay, i can't there sing you go. no um, that was dope we crushed it i think so too yep. so you said he's also in star trek mm-hmm. which i didn't know because i am not that big of a the nerd. tv series. so you how much star trek have you watched i watched quite a bit you know, Captain T. Kirk, Broussard, you know, I I watched Next Generation and I watched the original. So I was a big, you know, big fan of the show. I always liked how they got out of the, in and out of the situations. I liked how uh, William Shatner was like really like like a dope ladies man, even though I was too young to really understand it. Mm-hmm. I started trying to pattern my way of communicating um, like along the lines of how William Shatner did it. And it worked out for me. Like I won in life. You, know, you did. A pretty you dope did. wife. So, you know? I mean, William Shatner as a, a TV I give mentor. him a lot of credit for my success in life. That's that. I, yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. There um, you, go. you didn't know that. I didn't. I don't. I didn't yeah. know a lot of these things you about go. you. Okay. So are you a Star Wars nerd, too? Yes. Because Star Wars nerd is like. It's a little it's different. It's a little bit more sh- acceptable. It is because it's yeah. you know it's very mainstream Star mm-hmm. Wars now, and you don't really have to like think too much, you know. And like you know, there's like some sexy characters, some well-known characters in there. You know, Princess yep. Princess Leia is like you know she's dope. Yeah, she's still dope to this day. Oh, always, forever. Yeah. Um, rest in peace. Yeah. But okay, so you're you're a Star Trek nerd, and then you also mentioned that historically, I'm obviously way into Halloween. Mm-hmm. Historically. You're into Halloween. So yes. what it would have been some of your top Halloween costumes? Ooh, top Halloween. Co- I did a, a uh, like a voodoo 
voodoo doctor type deal one year, like based off of uh, the the frog princess and the frog character. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I did that yeah, one year, that, and half of my face movie. was like a skeleton, and the other half was me, and that was pretty dope. Like, and I still had my long hair, so they cut the top of my hat, my top hat out. My hair was coming oh. out, and it was, and I'm kind of tall, and I yeah. had my shoulders like that's a, all that's a good look. It was pretty cool. We we used to throw a party every every year at at our home until we moved out here but so the year before we did superheroes and that year i was the hulk and i had got a little chubby because life was good after football i didn't really work out too much Mm -hmm. so i got a little and they they drew in my muscles and stuff it wasn't like my muscles they were like they were manufactured through through artistic expression (laughs) and um i kind of looked like the hulk it was kind of interesting like when they painted me all green and I had on the purple shorts and all that it kind of worked out pretty well that year so I think the other year where I was still lifting right and they were my muscles I was the black Conan like and that was I really Uh. felt I had a real sword that year too it was a real sword we gotta go all out was it it was heavy it was a real heavy sword what did you do with it after Halloween uh, because that's that's like you know, I have so many costumes that are just in bags I'm not going to wear again because mm-hmm. I just believe in Halloween too much to, mm-hmm. like, reuse mm-hmm. costumes. You know, I uh, actually had, like, uh, shields of arms, so, like, family crest and stuff like that in my home. And I got the swords that, that actually went with them, so I actually borrowed it. It was already there as a part of the decor of my oh. crib. So it just went back to where it was at originally. So it was already a crib sword. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so... When you first started coming on FS1, you made some outlandish statements to me. Like um, what? Come on, outlandish. Yes. It ha- out- you must be going to Woodland Hills with this. Okay. I am. So I'm glad you remember. All right. Um, it's good. So you did some homework. I did. I okay. actually did some research because okay. the internet's and and also because I mean you 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 you're you're misrepresenting a little bit, which is okay. I understand. School pride. So let's see. You went to North Hills. That's correct. I went to Woodland Hills. Yes. Um, if you're from Pittsburgh, then you already know. Mm-hmm. Um, there you go. Good colors, strong colors. Very good nice. Look. Yeah. I like the shoes. Yeah. Um, so obviously. You played for North Hills. My brother played for Woodland Hills. Mm-hmm. My younger brother played for Woodland Hills. Mm-hmm. I played for Woodland Hills, not football. Mm-hmm. But we have very strong school pride, both of these schools, sure. especially when it comes to sports. Because mm-hmm. um, what else matters with sports? I mean, what's school for? True. So you no, claim forget academics. Yeah. You know. I mean, we, let's we, get the sports yeah. down. All right. We graduated. Right. Sure. You you claim that like North Hills is better traditionally at football than than Woodland Hills. You guys have more pro players, obviously, and I did make that point very clear. But in terms of better football, in terms of when I was in school and when your brother was in school and you were in school, yes, we were a better football program than Woodland Hills. Based off of, like, wins or, like, imagination? Well, even head-to-head. Even head-to-head. But go ahead. Okay, because North Hills 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 has two Whippeal championships. Yep. 1987. Which yeah. is the last recognizable year because that's the year I was born. They won a national championship that year too. And Number 1993. One. Yes. Okay. That was Woodland there Hills. That year. <laughs> Go ahead. So you remember it fondly. You know who we beat before we went to Three River Stadium? They weren't good enough to make it to Three River mm. Stadium. We played them at Mount Lebanon. It was a team by the name of Woodland Hills. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. We don't talk about Mount okay. Lebanon, by that's the way. All right. Neither that's one all right. of us recognize Mount Lebanon. Okay. That's um, 1996, 1999, yep. 2001. That's a different era. There's so many. I have to take a breath. But that's 2002, a different... 2009. That shout is, out George that, Novak. That is shout out George Novak for certain. One of the most legendary coaches uh, in the realm of coaching royalty in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, but you did go after the Golden golden era of the Whippeo. The Whippeo golden era was uh, the 90s and the late mid to late um, 80s. So when you guys had your runs of Whippeo championships and wins, you were far gone. Your brother was long gone. I'm sure your younger brother was probably maybe gone. Was he there in the 2000s? Uh, no, he's he he. Well, I mean, yes, but he's what? he's younger. Like he was. Like, what did he graduate? Two thousand eight. Okay, well, give your so your brother. If your brother was sitting here, he could have this discussion with me, and it would be a valid discussion. Mm. But you cannot, and I will not allow for you to paint uh, Woodland Hills, even though all the ton of success, 
Hall of Famer and your brother. I get it. You got a Hall of Famer. Two Hall and, of Famers. And, and, right. You got a Hall of Famer coming in Gronkowski Thank as you. well. And, you know, all of the great football players that uh, have come out. Were you there? What, what years were you there? We're the same age, right? Uh, no. Are you older than me? What are you talking are, are about? Are you younger than me? Yes, I'm younger than How you. How much younger? I'm 32 years old. Oh, yeah. I'm way older than you. Are we the uh, same age? Yeah, I got some big gaps between you guys as yes, siblings. Yes, we do. Jason is much older than me. And he's older than me. And, How old and are so you? I'm 40. So I got you. I'm 41. <laughs> I'm 41. Yes, you're almost 10 years older than me. Thank you. Um, Thank so you what is that. what is your favorite part of Pittsburgh? Oh, favorite part of Pittsburgh. We're that showing. Is, this is a great. Okay. That is a uh, Donnie great. Donnie has never been to Pittsburgh. But he put it up. This is a great picture. This is a great representation of Pittsburgh. Okay. Absolutely. So Donnie, our producer, okay. has gotten a picture of Pittsburgh. This okay. is clearly in the dead That's of That's my side of Pittsburgh. Where yes. The Allegheny and is. And my side is. You're on the Monongahela side? Yeah, this okay. side. Over here. Okay. And then here's your Ohio side. Yeah. Okay. So that's why they call it Three Rivers. Yep. Ta-da. There you go. <laughs> so this is the incline, which everyone not from Pittsburgh believes that people on Pittsburgh ride. Washington incline. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mount Washington is up here, which is which is why you have an awesome view. It's uh-huh. a great view of the city. I think it's the best view of any uh, skyline uh, in the it, world. It is very nice. Um, and then you can see all the bridges, and you can also see the freezing cold ice um, along the water, Don't which is that. which is what most of Pittsburgh uh, exists in. Sure. Because um, the fountain's not even on there. Mm-hmm. It's very pretty in the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, that's funny, Donnie. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite part of Pittsburgh? Man, that is a great question. I don't know. Because to me... Like, I think, other than, like, the sports, you know, everyone loves sports in, in, in Pittsburgh, and, like, that's a great part of growing up there. I think the Pittsburgh summers are awesome because it's so cold and miserable there in the winter. Okay. Like, everybody's outside, and it just, like, smells good in Pittsburgh in the summers. Like, okay. Like, yeah, there you go. There you go. It's green. It's sunny. You can go to a Pirates game. It's, like, mm-hmm. beautiful out. People Everyone's walk happy. The bridges, People are walk walking around, the riding bikes. And yep. it's, like, it's just, like, a great place to be. A lot of good people. Generations of families live there. So it's, like, a, a big city with, like, a small town feel. And that's what I love most about Pittsburgh. You know, the one cool thing about Pittsburgh is the amount of pride that people from there walk around with. Yeah. that I would say that's easily, hands down, the most uh, – the most impressive thing to me, the thing I love most, whether you enjoy living there now or want to go live there or whatever your thought process is, if you were born in the city of Pittsburgh, we share a certain type of pride uh, and, and belief in where we're from that I think very few places match the intensity that we bring in terms of where we're from. Yeah, I would agree with that. Having uh, my fiance is from Kansas City, and it's very similar to that. Like people from Kansas City ride for KC no matter Mm -hmm. what. Pittsburgh is low. I like that too. Mm -hmm. One other great thing about Pittsburgh is we're better than Cleveland. Well, that's true. So uh, That's not even close. Yeah, it's not. It's just a fact. Um, But Cleveland is getting, Cleveland's getting worn down right now, uh, rightfully so, because they came into this season with uh, great grand expectations that uh, the two of us knew were silly because it's Cleveland. Mm -hmm. But really, what is the issue in Cleveland right now? Because to me, it's the front office and it's Mm -hmm. been the front office. Mm -hmm. I would agree with you. It, it's it's when you have that much dysfunction and that much failure for as long as they've had it, and then every once in a while, and that once in a while is literally once in a while, it it, it has to go back to the people who are making the, the decisions at the highest levels of, of the organization. That is... I, I always say when you see a an organization thrive consistently for a very long amount of time, that is a, a product of the leadership on high. And the trickle-down effect is you see it play out with the results of the organization. It's the same exact thing for a dysfunctional organization and an organization that doesn't have – that type of excellence or that type of uh, accomplishment. So you can't blame it. If you had so many coaches, you can't keep blaming it on having poor coaching. If you had so many great athletes, number one draft picks, former pro bowlers, all pros, and you still can't win, you can't blame it on the players all the time. I know it's convenient to blame it on coaches and players because that's the product that you see, and it's a, a results-driven business. But when the culture is not correct – 
you can't expect that the culture is going to somehow uh, transform into success at different areas within the company. You're looking at the product of what the leadership is, which is, you know, they can't win. They're not winners. I could not agree with you more. Uh, you spent, obviously, a lot of time with the Washington Redskins. Oh, what a great segue. Um, thank you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, and That's why you have the show, right? Right. Uh, there you, know, you go. Uh-huh. Uh, so we've done a few, a few times. Okay. Um, All right. So I have limited experience, one year of experience, with uh, being close to that organization when mm-hmm. Jason played there. He was mm-hmm. traded there. Um, and, I mean, look, like traditionally – they've been known for being a dysfunctional situation. Like they've obviously had some great glory years Mm -hmm. and some spikes here and there, but right now they're a complete disaster. And my opinion is it's similar to the Browns. Mm -hmm. It starts at the top. Uh, You can't keep firing coaches. You can't keep moving pieces around and making uh, ridiculous decisions at the top and then expect everyone else to just fall in line and it's a work. Um, Otherwise, you know, I just think Dan Snyder is not a great owner. What is your opinion of the Redskins? You obviously have great ties to them, um, Mm -hmm. but I think they're just like they're no better than the Browns at this point. I think you're spot on. I mean, I guess adding to it would be the pile on, I I guess, but – if you've earned your reputation, then live with your reputation. What is the reputation of the Washington Redskins organization? I mean, generally speaking, the biggest the biggest discussion point is just the name and the franchise representation to begin with. Well, right? yeah, we, we we call them the R words, but okay, you know, that gets so, the so so there you, so there you go. I mean, if they were winning, I'm not sure what that the complexities of their 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 logo and their their title represents uh their their mascot i don't know how much what that represents but they're not winning so you choose to focus in on everything else versus the the product that's being put out there on sundays your your brother is a hall of famer and yet he could not make a difference in that organization you had guys like Bruce Smith and Deion Sanders and Mark Carrier and Marco Coleman and Dana Stubblefield and Big Daddy Wilkinson and and Stephen Davis and Jeff George and Brad Johnson who by the way won a Super Bowl with another team and you're talking about guys that have never been able to change the trajectory of of this team since the ownership group changed in, in what was it, 98, I believe. So, again, it's the same exact the same exact discussion point. If you've changed so many coaches, if you change so many players, you've replaced names over and over again with players. You've replaced coaches with different names over and over again, but yet you're still getting the same results. And you had one moment in time where you had some decent, some decent results with with Joe Gibbs. But even Joe Gibbs was like, I'm I, I'm just going to stick with NASCAR. Like I can't. <laughs> this is just not for me health wise. I just can't handle dealing with w- what's going on here. Um, if Joe Gibbs couldn't turn you into a Super Bowl uh, contender when he was there on his second time around, but yet is associated with arguably the greatest uh, football, uh, you know, assembled team over, you know, a three-year, four, four-year period of time, winning Super Bowls with different quarterbacks every single time, what are you going to say is the reason why your your team and your organization is not successful? Yeah, I mean, it just it lacks self awareness. I think, um, I, and maybe I, even accountability to yeah. add on to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Sure. And so, the, it feels like the the league is like really separating um, right now. You know, I, kind of a reflection of society, right? Like the rich are getting richer and mm. the poor are getting poorer. Mm. There is a real separation mm. separation happening, especially this week, halfway through the season. Um, some big trades uh, happens, and uh, you know Andy Dalton has been benched. It feels like the lowest of the low are tanking. Like the Bengals, t- the offense have already said they're tanking. The mm-hmm. Bengals appear to be tanking, and then some other teams are going to start following suit in the next couple weeks. What do you think of tanking? Because I personally despise it mm-hmm. in any sport. Like because you're a winner. Thank you. That is true. I don't um, think I don't think winners are okay with. But being I don't losers. think that players and coaches tank. Because every time you step on the field, that's your resume, right? Sure. Like, if you're not done playing and this is your last year, 
whatever you put on tape is your resume for where you might end up next year. So I don't think the players ever go out there and give up until it gets to the point in the season where it's like you literally have nothing to fight for. Like mentally, you can't overcome the cloud of negativity. Is that, I mean, not that, I don't I'm think you've been sure. on a team that's I've never, tanked, but can At you, least I've never known it to be tanking. I don't know. Yeah. I really wouldn't have any real feedback as a player on that because if I was on a tanking team, I know I was giving a winning effort. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I, even yeah, watching right. the Dolphins last night, like, I didn't – there wasn't a moment where – and and throughout the season, like, there's never been a moment where I felt like the guys weren't trying. And how do you tank as a coach? Like, are you not trying to call the right plays? Like, what are you doing in order to make sure you – like, because tanking to me is ensuring you lose. Yeah. So how so do you, you do just, that? Like, I don't know. I, I don't, don't. I don't. I, I don't comprehend it very well. I, I could, don't understand I it. I could see how Honestly, you could do it in basketball. I don't want to understand it because yeah. it's it's. First of all, I think it's offensive to fans that you expect people to pay for season tickets and come out there and spend their hard earned money. Oh, that's fair. And you put this horrible product on the field, and that's mm-hmm. not to any disrespect to the players, but mm-hmm. like there's a way you assemble a team. Every every player on every team, even the great teams, are not great players. They're so, professionals. They're they professionals. Have to accept, they got to accept that they're not a good product if they're not a good product. So. Yeah, but I'm saying like there's there's not great players on great teams. You it's really do look them. like a whole nother person. Thank it, you. It's, that was my goal. Like you totally look like a totally different person. It's yeah. kind of it's 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 throwing off. It's a bit. like like <laughs> throwing me off. It's like really kind of like a tad. Is it hard big, to take me seriously It's right a now? tad bit crazy. No, it's not hard to take you serious. It's just like I'm sitting here. I'm like I'm listening to like tanking, but dang, like man, like she like, really what, looks like a whole entirely different person. Like right what I'm now. saying is very serious, but I look ridiculous. Yeah, it's like that's what right. I was thinking. Yeah, you nailed it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's good. That's, okay. uh, that's what I was going for. It's so like, not. this is a very serious topic, and but stupid but you really matters. don't look very serious right now. No, and, but I mean everything and, I'm saying. And if your Charlie Chapman starts to fall no, down know, while you're talking, ta- that's, can you look in that that's thing going to be there? really uh, have, funny. Uh, the stickies inside my uh, bag there. That is going to be the best funny if your your mustache if falls. falls down. I'm trying yeah. to keep it up. Um, all, right. all right, enough negative talk. Okay. Yep. Who's the best team in the NFL? Because I think it's the Saints. Ooh. It's it's a good that is a good choice. Can I tell you why? Yes. Before you answer, not sure. to influence your choice. Okay. Um, because I don't think that the 49ers or the Patriots could survive losing their starting quarterback and go five and zero. I would not disagree with that thought process. However, I would not deem that to be the sole reason as to why I would say they're the best team so in the National best? Football League. Uh, this week, I'm still going with the Patriots as the best team because they have the best structure. They have the the best process. Um, their way of approaching a season, uh, a play, a game is second to none. And as, as long as I see – that process, that winning process being executed at the level that they're executing it, it's it's hard to pick somebody until they dethrone them. Even their offense, like the way their offense is playing, the way they look. We, we can always look at statistical categories. We can look at how effective or potent uh, an aspect of, of a team may be, but they are, they are weakly – a team that puts together the game plan that overcomes their opponent, and which, by the way, impressively overcoming yeah. their their opponents. So, um, which that same type of look actually exists in New Orleans, and that was why Teddy Bridgewater was able to come in and have the type of success. I think Sean Payton has done a fine job in that organization has done a fine job of creating process and structure. But until <laughs> until I see the Patriots um, showing a decline in the way that they're they're approaching their games, it's there's there's the Patriots and then there's everyone else. So if you want to say even the 49ers, like yes. I feel like the 49ers, the Saints, and the Patriots are in the same conversation. I, now. And, and like if you don't want to do the 49ers, Drew Brees and Sean Payton have won a Super Bowl together. I think that you could discuss the Niners because of how strong their defense and their defensive front is playing right now, but there's not enough of a sup, a sample size of them to say 
that I feel good about putting them in the same conversation as the Patriots. Then you look at a team like the New Orleans Saints, and they're, I'm comfortable with saying that they're up there as one of the most elite teams. I would debate them against Green Bay uh, today as to best team uh, outside of the New England Patriots um, in the National Football League, but I'm not putting any of those teams in the conversation with, with New England as of now. So – uh, just kind of to swing back to Baker really quick and then obviously mention Tom Brady because Tom Brady is obviously considered the GOAT. Um, Odell gave Tom Brady some GOAT uh, shoes. How did you feel about that? Because honestly, I, I, not that I uh, am like pro-violence, but I mean, like Baker, if I'm Baker, like I got to have a conversation with you about you giving the quarterback that just beat our ass some a gift some some goat goat skin goat sh- some goat goat, goat, goat shoes, fur shoes and like right in front of my face did you see the picture of his face looking at him yeah like, uh, they said the true definition of hating from afar i mean hating uh, like that's just that's that's like low-key disrespectful and i like odell and i get everything odell does but i'm like you said earlier i'm a winner yeah. i'm the one on the bus that's like if we lost ain't no talking on the bus right. ride home like you know, jokey joke. Like we just lost. So but probably the reason why they're losing is because of that disregard for one another. If you're gonna do that, why would you have Baker Mayfield standing right there while you're doing it? I I don't understand it. It's because there's probably a lack of respect and accountability for one another, which would say to me that that's kind of the culture that they're living in, which would say to me that's probably the reason why they can't win games so but you would agree that brady is the goat yeah yeah okay so i just want to make sure because there's still a few people like floating around out there that don't believe that i I don't see why and if they are then you know god bless try to figure it out the best way you can i agree um but i mean you played against brady a little bit even in college is he a trash talker who is a quarterback that talks trash? Because there's there, Philip Rivers is the first one that everyone mentions whenever you ask anyone like, is there a quarterback that like will talk talk shit to defenders? Because mm-hmm. to me, like that doesn't make any sense. If you're a quarterback, you want to like almost win them over. Mm-hmm. Have you ever have you ever played against a quarterback that like talks shit to you? Talk to me? No, no, no. Because I was a killer. You don't want to talk crazy I mean, to a killer. I mean, there's crazy people out there. People will try you. I feel you though. Your I mustache have, I, is I really, ju- your, I, that tape is starting to show it's, on. It's, uh, it's uh, on yeah, it's starting to show. It's kind of yeah. I was a killer though. Right. It it, it, so it wouldn't have made it you. wouldn't have made sense to talk crazy to me because it only took one time for me to get you. It, it's one thing if you're a tackler and it's oh I sacked you or this and that. Like no, I was literally knocking you out. Mm-hmm. And so it would not be wise to probably get me going charged up any more than did I you, already did you have a temper was on the field. No, no, I was kind of like this when I was on the field, but that's more crazy. Like your show. Yeah, I mean, you have to be, you have to always worry about the quiet ones. It's more crazy. Yeah. That was more crazy. Like I was more, I literally wanted to impact your life by how violent <laughs> I could be with you once I got to you. <laughs> so that was kind of, my deal but i don't recall any quarterbacks being really really big mcnab talk trash but not it was like silliness right it wasn't like bona fide like you know did you ever did you ever talk shit? yeah i was yeah you were talking bad too i remember i told a dude I, I hit a dude so hard his helmet rolled off and i went running after his helmet because i thought his head was still in the helmet <laughs> And I turned around and I looked at the dude and his eyes were as like big as like it's big. And I think it had really shocked him at how hard I had hit him. And I just recall running up to him and I told him, I was like, you know, get up off the ground and not in those words. But I told him, get up off of the ground. Don't nobody care about your life out here. And that would be probably one of the trash talking lines that I would say kind of um, illustrated the violent mind of LeVar Arrington at the time of him playing. At the time. You're chill now, though. Well, I'm chill off the field. But on the field, I'm there to to bless everyone that I come in contact (laughs) with. And I was going to try to bless you with an experience that you would remember 
for the rest of your life. Who was uh, historically a player? Um, I think obviously, like when when you're talking now, you know, you think of uh, LT, think of LT. Um, who's historically a player that you think played like you? Or like plays now that plays like you because it's a different game now. Like what you're saying is not acceptable yeah. in today's NFL. Now, today, a player now or just per- player period? Uh, I would say a player now. Yeah, a player now, probably Khalil Mack. I could see that. That's Khalil's a, very quiet. Yeah, at but, least like but, publicly. But like, you know, I don't really, ever hear Khalil but talk. his his motor to want to get it done and to get to the ball carrier and get to the quarterback is probably comparable i would say I, I mean i i didn't have as much success as him um but i like it i like in our games are pretty like similar in in, in style yeah I, I i love the chicago defense i wish mm. that they would uh do better do i mean not the defense the defense is great i wish right. chicago would the do team. better yeah um and move off of mitch trubisky but right. um but thanks so much for joining us sure. uh we'll end on that me. uh um pro violence note uh, yeah. On the field only. Of I'm course. not pro violence. On I, the actually, field yes, only. I am totally pro peace. But uh, yes, on the field, on the field it, it is. It is a place where you are actually legally able to <laughs> release your animosities and and um, um, hatreds. You know, if if that exists in you, and um, get it all out. Yeah. Are you a seven two four or a four one two? I was a four one two. Okay. Legit. Got to check. Got to make sure. So you know, if if you rock seven two four, we accept you. We do, but, but it, it just like ain't it. the same as four one two. Yeah, and you're yeah. not like really the same. And, and if you don't catch that lingo, you know you're not from Pittsburgh. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't. it's okay. You're just not. Yeah. You're just not from Pittsburgh. Sure. As I said, my you know. address it Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. PA. Yes, which is important. Also, one five two three seven. I'm not gonna get it, but it's, it's. I don't live there it's anymore. Very so. close. Uh, well, I'm my, so my far away. Does, so. Hey, I'm so far away from <laughs> Pittsburgh. My parents don't live in that joint. <laughs> you want to go see my old crib? It's 133 Shannon Drive. Go shout them out. Say, "Wow, Lavar used to live here, huh?" There you go. Uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Quit it. Quit it. Quit it. What? Quit it. We about to turn up in this bitch. All right, Donnie Heller is out today. Uh, he has the week off, so. Donnie will be teaming up for Win It or Quit It. Donnie, what's up? All right. What am I winning or quitting today? No slip ups. Okay. We're past the halfway point of the NFL season, and we've got two undefeated teams left. We got the Been There, Done That Patriots in New England, and a 49ers team that's got everybody like, what? Joy, despite all of that, it's the Saints that are the best team in the NFL. Win It or Quit It. Excellent, Donnie. Well done. Not Thank that hard. You. Thank you. you Not know? that hard. With it, the Saints are the best team in the NFL. What? The 49ers are the best team in the NFL. No, they're not. It's the Patriots. No, it's actually just the Saints. Um, and here's why. Could the 49ers lose Jimmy Garoppolo and go 5-0? and Of course, the answer is no. Could the Patriots lose Tom Brady and go 5-0? and The answer is no. But the Saints did that. And you say, well, yeah, Joy, of course they did. They had Teddy Bridgewater. Well, I mean, Teddy Bridgewater didn't just go down there and knock on the door and ask Sean Payton for a job. They planned that. They saw that Teddy Bridgewater was actually a franchise quarterback who everyone was sleeping on because he had an injury. So they had the perfect situation, and they are a great all-around team. They beat in Seattle, the Cowboys, Bucks and Jags, which you might think the Bucks are terrible. I do too, but they do sneak around and win some games every now and then. And the Bears and the Cardinals. Bears on the road, actually, as well, because you know I'm going to talk about Trubisky later, and that's fine. But the Bears' defense is actually very good, and the Cardinals are not an easy out either. They have one of the best receivers in Michael Thomas. They did. They had a few of these wins without Alvin Kamara. Their one loss is to the Rams, which is completely respectable. And look, I understand that the 49ers and the Patriots are undefeated. I get it. The Patriots' offense is only fooling the Dolphins, Steelers, Jets, Redskins, Giants, and Browns' defenses. So just let that simmer in for a second. If you actually watch the Patriots offense, and there's a reason why they went and got Muhammad Sanu, their Patriots offense is actually not very good. And as all the, I just mentioned, those defenses that they played, not very good. So I'm not saying that their record is a fluke because their defense is all-time amazing. I just think that they haven't played a lot of good defenses. And even Cleveland, who has a pretty good defensive line, it gave him a little pushback for the first part half of the the game. And look, I, I pushback is like one of my favorite things to make fun of. Was, people swore that the Bulls were giving the Heat pushback in the uh, big three days. It was nonsense. Oh, pushback. 
oh, gentlemen sweep, really gave them that pushback. But they did. They, they hung in there, all right? So it gave you a glimpse of what will happen when the Patriots actually do start playing some good teams. I think this game coming up against the Ravens will be very telling. How do they perform against a team that is actually very well-rounded, that we think is going to win the division and will make some noise in the playoffs? That's what I want to see. So they're not fooling me. And a perfect example of that is the Bills. Yes, they beat the Bills, but they looked terrible against the Bills, who are a good team. So it, it's telling about what the Patriots really are. Now, the 49ers are for real. They're, they're all around, and they've also beaten the Steelers, Bengals, Browns, and Redskins. And look, you, you beat who you play, so I understand that. They definitely have more quality wins against the Rams and the Panthers. So, I mean, if you want to fight that the, the 49ers are better than the Saints, I'm not going to freak out. I just think that they are more – the Saints are a better all-around team, and they couldn't lose Jimmy G and do – what the Saints have done. And I think that the Saints have more experience, obviously with Drew Brees and Sean Payton. They've both been there before and won a Super Bowl. And I think that in the postseason, that matters. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get mad at you if you think the 49ers are better. 49ers are great. But to me, the Saints are the better all-around team. So I think it goes Saints, 49ers, and Patriots as it stands right now. What's next? On Sunday, Cleveland managed to turn the ball over on three consecutive plays against New England in a loss that everybody saw coming. Joy, the Browns are who we thought they were. Rest in peace, Denny Green. Quit it or quit it. Are who we thought you were. This mustache is what I thought it was. Very cheap and not staying on my face. Yes, with it. They are. They are a very predictable 2-5 and five wins against the Jets which is whatever they've given up on the season. And one good win against the Ravens, which I still can't explain or understand. I, I guess the Ravens just, I don't know, didn't come to play that day. I don't know what happened. But the rest of their, the, the next four games that they have coming up are the Broncos, Bills, Steelers, and Dolphins. I think they could go one and three, at best two and two in the next four games. And I know Browns fans are going to freak out about that because they've been holding out hope that all of a sudden, the season is going to get easier, and it's light lightening up, which it is for the most part, but I already think they're a disaster. I, I had them as a wild card team this year. It's looking like I might be wrong about that. Uh, I think they finished 6-10, uh, and 7-9, which would be a disaster. And also, since no one wants to mention it, I feel like it's time we address the elephant in the room. Um, Freddie Kitchens currently has the exact same record as Hugh Jackson, who was fired exactly one year ago today. It is the anniversary of the firing of Hugh Jackson, who had a record of, I think, 2-5-1, and one, if I'm not mistaken? I think you are correct. I think I'm correct. So technically, Hugh Jackson actually had a better record because one of those was a tie. Now, I don't believe in ties, but they count them. So two and five. That's what Freddie Kitchens has got working for you on a season where people were actually having a conversation about the Cleveland Browns going to the Super Bowl. Again, we don't really recognize the people that were saying that because, you know, we, we let them have their moment. Everybody has their moment. I'm wearing a stick on mustache. So everybody has their moment. OK, but this is this is really what's happening. So I think obviously Freddie's going to tag on a few more wins this season. The Bengals have finally uh, given up on Andy Dalton. So that's that's two dubs right there. Um, but even still, even if even if they do those next four games, the Steelers are, are, are not just they're not just going to walk in and beat the Steelers, even if I don't believe in Mason Rudolph. And I keep telling you about the Dolphins. Dolphins are eventually going to mess up this tank and, and win a game. Like, one thing the Dolphins are good at is messing up the plan. They are they might even actually end up winning, like, three games before this is all over because they're really trying. I mean, they, they had a lead. They had a 14-0 lead against the Steelers at home. I mean, they blew it. They got blown out. But they started off good. Anyway, the point is, I think Hugh Jackson would have put on a few more wins at the end of the season as well. I don't believe in firing coaches midseason. I think it's nonsense. It, it, it makes no sense to me. It's so much bigger than just letting a, a head coach go. It's a complete and utter breakdown of the entire organization. That's why I hate what they did in Washington. And the narrative around Freddie Kitchens is not what the narrative was around Hugh Jackson, which I would really curious as to why. I don't know. Freddie Kitchens needs uh, another year before he figures it out. Freddie Kitchens um, doesn't have the support of the front office. Freddie Kitchens, uh, you know, he's learning on the job. I don't know. You didn't get those uh, extra little tag on situational benefits of the doubt. Yeah, that's what I was looking yeah. for. Excuse, excuses, <laughs> excuses to feed the excuse machine. That's what's happening. I don't think it's Freddie Kitchen's fault or Baker's or Odell's or the stinky lake. I think it's the front office 
And it normally is the front office when you have a dysfunctional situation. When you have any company or any situation of any sort, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a family, whether it's a company, whether it's a team that is dysfunctional, you can go straight to the top and normally figure out the problem. Because whoever it is that's running the organization should be, in theory, capable of recognizing when things and particular situations are not healthy and create a toxic environment for the rest of the organization. I'm not saying Freddie Kitchens is that at all. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that Freddie Kitchens was hired because John Dorsey wanted someone he could control. We know that because if he had brought in a seasoned veteran head coach like, I don't know, Mike McCarthy, for example, he's available, he's out there, or any of these other former head coaches who are now coordinators, they would have wanted to run the team the way that they know how to run a team or make decisions based off of the experience and failures that they've already had. Freddie Kitchens doesn't have that leeway because he has to still figure out how to even be a head coach because he wasn't even an offensive coordinator for an entire season in the NFL. He never would have gotten this job with any other organization except for the Cleveland Browns. And kudos to him. That's great. I'm not hating. Get your money, Freddie. But I'm saying this is very easy to figure out. It's at the top. It's always been at the top. And that's why organizations like the Browns struggle so hard to maintain success. It's why organizations like the Dolphins can't be successful. It's why organizations like the Bengals can't be successful. And I'm not banging on these guys. I'm just saying that when you continuously fire people who are otherwise qualified for their job and don't give them enough time and give them enough uh, leeway to make their own decisions, then it's a failure. There's a reason why you hire people to do their jobs. Because they're good at doing their jobs. And if you're bad at hiring people to be good at their jobs, then it's you. So it always starts at the top. Anyway, the point is, I just think it's very interesting that the narrative around Freddie Kitchens is completely different than it was around Hugh Jackson. I think part of that was uh, Hard Knocks did not help Hugh Jackson at all. It, it, it was, it, And I think that if Hard Knocks was there this year, we'd probably be having the same conversation around Freddie Kitchens because Hard Knocks just gives you a look into the organization that most people don't want to see. I mean, look at what the Raiders were at the beginning of the season, and now the Raiders seem like a mostly functional situation. Not great, but they're growing. At the beginning of the season, it was a complete dumpster fire. Why? Because there were cameras. If there was cameras in your house every day, it'd be the same situation. That's why I don't want a reality show. Anyway, the Browns will continue to be the Browns until they set up their organization at the top properly. We'll see what happens for the rest of the season. I just don't think that they make the playoffs, and I think that is a colossal disappointment because of the expectations that the Browns and their fans and the organization put on themselves. Hear ye, hear ye. NBA fans are petty. Welcome to the Thunderdome, Warriors and Warriors fans. You now get to experience the hell of the entire NBA universe raining down on you every time you take an L because you've been living in the Hamptons for the past five years, uh, crushing everyone and winning a bunch of MVPs and championships and getting Kevin Durant after you already have Clay and Steph and Draymond. Um, and so now everyone's going to come for you. I know about this because I'm a Miami Heat fan. And when LeBron left, it, everyone was dancing on our graves. And really up until this year, that's been the case. Uh, now we have Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero, and it's looking like things are trending up. Uh, Justice Winslow's playing great. He's got a nice win over the Bucks. Um, so we're finally uh, doing good things again. All right, we're done with that. Um, the point is, you guys are you, you're going to have to deal with this for this year. Just relax. You're getting Clay back next year, but everyone's going to come for you um, and just prepare for the ride of a lifetime from the top to the very bottom of the pit of uh, the NBA. And um, when Draymond is coming out and saying uh, that you fucking suck every night <laughs> and Steve Kerr saying that losing by 30 is going to be a regular occurrence. Uh, you guys, you guys are in it. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for this tea. Uh, Heller's not here today, so I apologize to him as well. Um, but that's just what it is. They got a nice win over the Pelicans. Um, that's, that's fine. They're not going to make the playoffs this year, which is going to be tragic. And when you really think about it, they just built that ridiculous building and they're charging like so much money for tickets. And this is the year that all this goes down. It's just so juicy. And I don't feel bad for them because I've already experienced And where were Warriors fans uh, coming out to say good things about Heat fans when this was going on? Nowhere. So enjoy it. It's your one year. I'm going to be petty about it. Um, and you're getting Clay back next year anyway. So I really don't feel that bad for you. Although this is a wonderful time um, to mention that, you know, the door is wide open for Steve Kerr and uh, for Bob Myers to build a uh, re rebuild a championship franchise that Mark Jackson assembled. So he's not there anymore. So do it again. Do it again. <laughs> do it again. High key, so many people will need a quarterback in 2020 and low key, everyone is screwed. So there are so many teams that need quarterbacks right now. Let's start with uh, the Dolphins. 
they are tanking for Tua, which hopefully they're not, but that just is the most trendiest way to put what they're doing into, you know, a slogan. The Bengals have just benched Andy Dalton. The Bears, uh, they're saying they're sticking with Trubisky for the rest of the season. Good for you. Way to be loyal. The Chargers, Steelers, uh, I know everyone loves Mason Rudolph, but I'm I'm pretty sure that the Steelers will be drafting a quarterback as well. Uh, the Redskins, the Broncos, the Titans, unless they want to stick with Ryan Tannehill, which would be very Tennessee Titan of them to do. Uh, the Falcons will probably be needing a quarterback, and so will the Bucks. That is a lot of teams, and there are not enough good quarterbacks available for those teams. What does that mean, Joy? That means uh, probably half these teams are going to be screwed, and most of them will probably be the teams that need the quarterbacks the most, like the Dolphins, the Bengals, and the Redskins and Broncos. All those other teams, uh, the Bears, the Chargers, the Steelers, Titans, Falcons, Bucks, if they could survive without getting a first-round quarterback, they'll still be mediocre or terrible, but – those other teams must take a quarterback. And I'm sorry, I'm just not super hype about this draft. Why am I not super hype about this draft? Because nobody's super hype about this draft. Is anyone even talking about the court, like having serious conversations about what the quarterbacks who are going to be available in this draft are going to do? I know the draft's far off, but when we have a, when we have a prospect coming up, we're talking about them in prospect fashion well before the draft. And, and other than Tua, who, by the way, is injured right now. So Dolphins, no thank you. Sorry, I didn't like Tua to begin with. And look, please prove me wrong uh, by all means. Like, not a hater. I hope he has a great career. I just, I don't see it. Um, Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts. No one ever talks about Jalen Hurts. I actually think Jalen Hurts is, is the best prospect available. Uh, Justin Herbert. Like, there's there's a bunch of uh, quarterbacks available in the draft. But then you also have Teddy Bridgewater, Nick Foles, Andy Dalton will be out there, Cam Newton. What do you do with those guys? And how much do any of those guys have left? Because obviously they're available for a reason. Teddy Bridgewater and Nick Foles obviously at the top of that list. But it's going to be mayhem. And half, if not more, of these quarterbacks, as I said, are, are going to be a bust because nothing is clear. And uh, it, it makes me very concerned about the, the landscape of the NFL moving forward. Because while we do have a lot of great young talents and some of the older talent is still playing at a very high level, obviously Drew Brees and, and Tom Brady – this is very this is very troublesome because I, I don't I don't see a lot of uh, bright spots in that situation. I do think whoever gets Teddy Bridgewater, if they're in the right situation, will take it to the next level. Collins talks a lot about Chicago. Obviously, I would love to see Teddy Bridgewater in Chicago and not end up with like, I don't know, the Bengals. But we'll see. So high key, the president went to the ball game. Low key, stick to politics. So uh, dear Mr. President, I want to thank you for finally ending the age-old saying, uh, birthed out of nonsense and stupidity, that is stick to sports. It's one of the most annoying things you can ever say to me. Um, it instantly makes me wonder uh, how and what kind of decision-making led you to saying it, because of course, you know that I pay taxes, of course, and I also vote, and I am a citizen of the United States of America. So uh, being a sports caster does not exempt me from any of those things. If it did, wonderful. I don't have to pay taxes. I might actually consider giving up my right to vote if it means that I don't have to pay taxes anymore because California taxes are just ridiculous. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. So I'm obviously allowed to have an opinion about the country that I live in, uh, where I pay taxes, vote, and I am bound to the laws by which these people uh, decide for me. So, of course, I can have an opinion about politics. You know that. But by the president and his entourage showing up at Game 5 of the World Series, he uh, inadvertently closed the door psh, on that conversation for the rest of time because uh, you didn't stick to politics. I don't, I don't see any anvils and judges in there, right? Right? Am I right? Does that look like, does that look like the White House to you? It's not. That looks like a ballpark where we go drink beer, act a fool, and cheer on athletes who play sports. Stay in your lane, bro. So since you didn't, um, the rest of us can act accordingly, which is what we do at, at, at sporting events. We boo. Um, and we chance, and unfortunately all of that was directed at you. And, uh, it's actually the, one of the most impressive things I think he's pulled off in his presidency. But, uh, I mean, we just can't, we can never have that conversation again, right? Like nobody can say, shut up and dribble. Cause that is a ballpark and that's where you are. So I appreciate that. Am I far off on that? Sports doesn't exist in a vacuum. 
and nothing does. Well, yeah, of so, course, like, of course. But like saying stick to simplifying sports. Simplifying things is a great way of making people feel uh, disenfranchised and left out. And of course, the crossover that he created by going to the baseball game eliminates that for the rest of the time. Yeah. So thank you. So I'm grateful for that. You know, find the positive in any situation. And that is wonderful for me. Anyone who feels otherwise. And when the election starts coming up, I'll just be tweeting a picture of that. Well, that's maybe a gif of that since that's moving. Um, so high key, the NCAA caved low key hallelujah they announced today they will begin implementing policies or writing into policies or at least having conversations about policies to allow student athletes to profit up their likeness shout out to cali uh always being the innovators and ahead of things but um obviously california uh signed the bill the pay to play bill everyone was freaking out you're gonna pay athletes it's the end of amateur sports it's actually not it just means that you know one of the girls that plays volleyball can get a uh, endorsement deal from Fashion Nova for her Instagram. So she can pay for her books. It's very exciting stuff. It really actually has nothing to do with the schools at all. And nothing is fair in life anyway. So whoever told you that is lying to you. It's great. I'm glad the NCAA finally just figured out that it's time to evolve. Um, everything's going to be fine. No one panic. They'll figure it out. Being at the NCAA, I'm sure it will take a little bit of time. They haven't announced the timeline, correct, on like when this is happening? Yeah, it's still up in the air. The California uh, law doesn't go into effect until 2023. Yeah, so this is all still a ways off, but it, the ball is rolling now, so congrats that that is finally done. Loser power rankings, loser power rankings. These are the losers the losers of the week. All right, loser power rankings. This week we have the Bucks. The Buccaneers sucks for Bruce Arians and his hats. Uh, he's a good dude, good coach. Um, he just couldn't solve the enigma of Jameis Winston. And I mean, who can, uh, he has had 91 turnovers since he entered the league in 2015. That is 15 more than the next quarterback or uh, an entire season. He is inventing new ways to turn over the ball. He is the Elon Musk of turnovers. And so, I mean, I, I feel bad for Bruce Arians. I, I was hoping that this would be the situation that would work he's not the guy so as i said uh, a few minutes ago they're gonna have to find a new quarterback but um i i was never a big Jameis winston fan to begin with so none of this surprises me but i i thought if anyone had a chance of turning that situation around in tampa it was going to be bruce arians um he'll be there next year but Jameis winston will probably not be the starter uh the Bengals and the dolphins the Bengals have benched andy dalton ryan finley We'll be starting for the Bengals. So the Finns and the Bengals are in a tank race to the bottom of the league. Uh, I think the Bengals will actually win at being the worst because they're actually trying and they're actually bad. Like they weren't planning on tanking and the Dolphins are tanking and still trying to win, if that makes sense. Um, so I think the Dolphins will actually mess up the tank and win a couple games. Um, but they have a million picks in the first round anyway, so it doesn't really matter. They're both going to be awful, um, worst teams in the league, and um, basically unwatchable. Uh, the Dolphins, however, I do think they got a little fight to them. I'll give them that. I like Ryan Flores. They've got a little fight to him. I, I liked him freaking out on the sidelines uh, Monday Night Football against the Steelers. You know, don't give up. Don't give up. And for that, for the record, players and coaches don't tank. It's only organizations, which is why I hate tanking so much. Finally, uh, number one in the loser power rankings are people that hate Halloween. Uh, Halloween is the best holiday of all the holidays. Uh, come on, Jeremy, what's the best holiday? Christmas. Christmas is not the best holiday. No, Christmas is not the best holiday. Christmas season is a wonderful time of the year. It's a wonderful time of the year, but the actual holiday of Christmas is incredibly taxing and stressful and expensive situation okay yeah, yes overall it's rewarding when it's over you feel happy there's a time of the year like there's something in the air you can't explain i'm with you on that but it, but as standalone holidays halloween is more fun one you get to dress up and look ridiculous and most people don't judge you the people who do judge you are on this list people who hate halloween first of all second all the kids get candy and as much candy as they want so if you're thinking of people other than yourselves it's really the best time because you're just giving away candy right you get to decorate your house with stuff you get to watch some of the best more, most entertaining and well thought out movies which is the horror genre which does not get the credit it deserves and i don't even like scary movies like that christmas movies they're like this like some christmas movies are excellent and some christmas movies are like so i'm never gonna get that time back in my life you know what i mean so halloween's the best um, and just as just a note, all right, if you're, if you're planning on giving out candy to children for Halloween who come to your house, uh, and if you don't want to give out candy, like by all means, just turn the lights off and chill and be a grump and like, uh, I'm not judging you. Like that's, that's fine. 
interactions with humans are the worst. So I, I fully understand that. But if you are going to give stuff out of your house, please just give out candy. Please just give out candy. Do not be the person that gives out pretzel sticks. Okay. And here's why. I don't know if you wash your hands before you like divvied up these pretzel sticks. I don't know if you're reusing the plastic baggies. Like I need to know that this is a sealed item. Okay. That I can feel over and inspect and then give to the child. Like I, I, I don't need cantaloupe. All right. Just, just don't no cupcakes, nothing, no cookies. All right. Just don't get creative candy in the bowl. Push the bowl out. The children take the candy. They put it in the bag. They say, thank you. Happy Halloween. Love your decorations. On you go. Don't get creative. I, I, I like the Cheez-Its. No, none of it. There's plenty of bags of candy. If you run out, turn the lights off and go to bed. Like, don't, don't get creative. I don't want to, I don't want anything in the bag that could have been poss possibly ever touched by your hands. No offense. You're not that clean. Is that fair? Very fair. Okay. Cause like you would be surprised. <laughs> Heller's gone. <laughs> New Heller. <laughs> All right, time for the culture report. What is the tea, team? So Popeyes, they're back with the spicy chicken sandwich starting this Sunday, November 3rd. Apparently, they've hired hundreds of extra workers this time to handle the high demand. Do you get the hype? I, I actually don't think they're going to need all the extra workers because they needed that last time. Everybody was going there. Now I feel like most people have had it unless they like really, really want to get it again. I don't think there's going to be a large rush the way there was before. I didn't have it the first time around because um, I, I, I make my own decisions. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm going to try it now that it's back. I will say I had a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich, which many people were comparing to the Popeye's chicken sandwich. I had it the other day. Um, I, I wasn't thrilled. I wasn't thrilled with it. Uh, we had a conversation about Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is not on the go meal. It's just difficult to eat. Everything you eat at Chick-fil-A requires sauce down to the fries. You have to eat the, the, the Chick-fil-A fries with ketchup. They're so salty. You must have ketchup. Um, that's just the way that they're set up. So it, it, like, unless you have a third hands, um, it's very difficult to eat in a car. You have to like pull over and set everything up. I just went through this. Um, so <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm really excited to try it. I'm going to try it. Uh, I believe the hype. I just couldn't do it the first time around because I just, like I said, I, I, I can't, I, I gotta, I gotta do it when I, when I'm, when I'm ready to do it. Not when you tell me that I'm ready to do it. Uh, what's next? Okay, so Kanye West's highly anticipated Jesus is King album is finally out. Now, Joy, I know you've listened to it, so what are your thoughts? Okay, so uh, you're welcome to anyone who followed my advice to not follow the Kanye hype about when it was getting released. It was always getting released on October 25th because that's the only thing that makes sense. And while it sounds nice that he's just like an artistic genius that had to put the last final touches on the album... Um, it really wasn't the case. It was just always coming out when the film came out because that makes sense. Why would you do it any other way? So stop trying to fool your fans, uh, artists out there. It's very annoying. Um, I don't know why people fall for it anymore. But anyway, the point is, uh, I did listen to the whole thing. And here's the thing. If he was trying to be ironic, I think I'd feel differently about the album, right? If he was trying to do it as just like a rap album that had gospel influences, I think I would feel differently about it. But... It's Kanye. He's not a gospel singer. And gospel is very important to me. I grew up on gospel music. It is a part of basically my daily routine. I listen to the Kirk Franklin uh, Spotify playlist uh, on the work almost every day. It clears my mind before I come into work. It's very important. Um, and look, I, I'm, I'm a gospel music person. So this is a okay album by Kanye and a mediocre gospel album like New Nation Project and God's Property Goes Harder. Sorry, it does. It, like top to bottom. Uh, the one song that I really actually enjoyed on the album, and the album is listenable like start to finish um, as most Kanye albums are. It's not, it's nowhere near the top of Kanye's work. The one song I do like is more of a Kanye song and not a gospel song and that's Closed on Sundays. So I don't know. Like, you like gospel music. Did you think it was a good gospel album? Because they're telling us it's a gospel album. I mean, like you said, I mean, it's a, it's okay. Right. I listen to uh, God's Property every day, too, so it's better. But it was cool. I liked a few songs, and I was able to get through it. Right. So, so yeah. I mean, it's if like you describe an album as, like, I was able to get through it, it's just okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not going to kill it. Like, I think the th my only conflict with it is this. Gospel music is important to me. And, like, if you're going to introduce a great large group of people that is Kanye Nation or world, like, of fans to gospel music, 
you got to come a little harder than that. Like, can you toss a little Kirk on there? Like, you know, get a little T.D. Jake section. Like, put something in there. Some C.C. Winans. Like, trick us, you know? Like, I don't, I just, I felt like, mm, you know, I just, I don't want that to be the representation of gospel music that is circulated around the world. Is that fair? That's fair. Okay. All right, so next we have The Addams Family. Movie is in theaters. I want to know, how do you feel about the animation style? Um, I liked it. Me and Bella went to see it uh, this weekend. It's it's cute. It's adorable. Take the kids. Uh, it's not the Adams Family of our childhood. Um, so it's not scary. And it's cartoony. It has a good message about being nice to your neighbors. I don't believe in neighbors, but if that's your <laughs> thing. Um, you know, it's it was good. It was a good movie, good kids movie. It's a little it's a little twist on the Adams like original Adams family. There's like cell phones in it and stuff, you know. Um so it's like a modern version of the of the Adams family. But good, totally watchable, nice fun like family Halloween movie. It looked funny. It is funny. Okay. It's funny. Yeah. It's got some good lines. All right, so next we have The Grudge. So the trailer for The Grudge dropped and hits theaters early January. And the first one was scary to me. It was actually kind of traumatizing. I did not see the first Grudge. You haven't. No, and I won't be seeing this either. <laughs> I won't be seeing this either. So, like, I love scary movies. Um, so this is our review preview. We review the Adam Family preview, The Grudge. It, it looks scary, and I don't... Here's the thing about scary movies. Like, I I don't do scary movies where I feel like I don't have any control. Like, I don't like scary movies with any sort of, like, supernatural or anything that has to do with, like, religion or exorcists or, like, any of that. Like, at all. So this, I'm good. I'm good, fam. Like, mm-mm. No, thank you. Uh, I, 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 not at all. No. Are you gonna see it? I'm gonna go see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Because I like the first one, and the croaking noise is, you know. Yeah, like, that's the other thing. I can't do house noises. So I'm one of those people. Like once I hear one noise, I hear every noise, and then I can't sleep, and then I got to turn the TV on and get the lights. It's just obnoxious. I, I don't. No, I'm good. Okay. I, yeah. Because if I set the alarm, I know no humans are coming in without me knowing. You know, like unless I have a glass cutter or something. But uh, and that's thinking too much. But like you know, they don't use doors. So, no, thank you. All right, thanks for joining us this week on the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. Thank you to LeVar Arrington for coming by and uh, having great discussions about the NFL. Happy Halloween to everyone. Make sure that you subscribe on YouTube, uh, Maybe I'm Crazy podcast with Joy Taylor and all of our social pages at Maybe I'm Crazy pod. You can listen on, I don't know why I did that, Um, YouTube. You can listen on the iHeartMedia app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and we're also on SoundCloud. Have a safe Halloween, and we'll catch you next week. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm not. Ooh.